Today we are making sourdough starter. Sourdough starter is like this culture of wild yeast and bacteria that it collects from your environment to ultimately become this leavening agent that you use in your bread that will substitute your yeast or um, whatever you use to let your dough rise. So it's a very fun science project. It's a long, technical, and tedious process. However, it is definitely worth the wait. So, let's get into it. For the first day, it's like a week-long process, but for the first day, you're just gonna start by creating your starter. So you just need flour and water. I would recommend starting the first day with a whole wheat flour or a rye flour, depends on what you have on hand. As I've been baking over the quarantine, I have noticed that whole wheat flour is harder to find, but I do know in the Annapolis area, we have the Amish market and they always had flour. And so you could get whole wheat flour there or you could get rye flour. If you just can't find access to any flour at all, you can use all purpose flour. I wanna make that clear. It just won't have that complex of a flavor and it may take a little more work and waiting and time than if you use one of these, how should I say it, like superfoods. The reason why you start with a jam-packed flour like this is because it's not stripped of all of those proteins that they have on the grain in the field. Um, All-purpose flour is very stripped away of all that stuff because you can use it in cakes or you can use it in breads or pizzas or muffins or scones or biscuits or whatever you want. But we whole wheat and um, rye are typically more breads, branny flours. Another cute tip when it comes to making sourdough starter is that you always want your measurements to be the same. Now, um, with bread making, that doesn't necessarily mean you want one cup of flour to one cup of water because they're not going to weigh the same. Water is denser than flour and heavier than it, so if you have a cup of water and a cup of flour, well, really, you have more water than flour. So when you're going into baking, something that I've learned is that the best way to measure is by using weights rather than volume. A kitchen gadget that you will need in order to succeed in bread making um, in the long run is a kitchen scale. They're not expensive. They're probably like five to 10 bucks on Amazon um, and you'll just use it forever. For the first day, you're gonna do 113 grams of your choice of flour with 113 grams of actually pretty cold water. You're gonna put this mixture into a heavy duty container. I'm not talking about a Tupperware. Um, I'm talking about a ceramic crock or um, a glass or a mason jar or something along those sorts. You can probably go to Home Goods and pick one up. I saw one the other day. This is what the um, cider should look like. It kind of looks like toothpaste, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your lid on it, and if you don't have a lid, then plastic wrap will work, but you don't want it to be airtight. So as the 24 hours progress, there will be um, carbon dioxide bubbles that will be released, and you need that to escape, otherwise it will explode. So put that aside for 24 hours, and there you go. We're back with day two and it's been a little over 24 hours. It's about one o'clock and I did 11 o'clock yesterday, but it's whatever. This is what it looks like right now. So your sourdough today isn't gonna be bubbly, it's just gonna be like this doughy thing, and that's fine, you're still gonna feed it anyway. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take 113 grams of your starter and just put it in a separate bowl. Okay, so I have 113 grams. I know it looks really weird right now, but bear with me. And you have leftover. That's the whole point of it. Like you're you're taking some from the hole and then you're feeding that and then you don't deal with this leftover stuff. Like I said, these discards, you don't really need to keep. All right, so your next step is to then mix the same amount of flour and water to this, but you're not gonna do whole wheat anymore. You're just gonna do all purpose. I like to mix the water first instead of mixing it all at the same time because the water helps to loosen up the, the starter already. Now you're gonna mix it with 113 grams of flour. 
basically the same thing you did yesterday except there's another component but it's the same measurements 113 grams all around so here's my crop and it's gonna sit for 24 hours okay it's day three of feeding my sourdough starter so i'm gonna show you what it looks like and how we're gonna feed it today okay this is what my sourdough starter looks like today hopefully by now you'll establish a pattern which is equal parts of everything when you're feeding your sourdough 113 grams of your active starter mix with 113 grams of water if your house is like a colder house try to make it like lukewarm water nothing exceeding over 110 grams that will kill your bacteria it's too hot and then after you loosen up your starter you'll add 113 grams of flour <laughs> There's not much technique to mixing it with the water in the bowl. It's just kind of supposed to loosen it up. Like that looks disgusting, but it's what you're looking for. Remember to rinse out your bowl every time just to avoid getting dry bits. So next step, pour your sourdough in here. Last step, mix 113 grams of flour in this and mix it until no flour bits are remaining. And then put the lid on and set it aside for another 24 hours. It's day four of sourdough. In preparation for recording, I've already weighed out all my ingredients. I would like to make it clear if it wasn't understood earlier in this video, we're no longer using our whole wheat or our rye flour. You only use that on the first day. Every feeding since then, you're using just regular all-purpose flour. So start by mixing your water with your starter to loosen up your starter so that it makes it easier to incorporate your flour. I've recently purchased a new thing that will help illustrate or visualize what your sourdough starter should be doing. This jar has um, a lid that attaches where you can seal it airtight so there's no air getting in or out, which is good for keeping stuff fresh. However, for our sourdough starter, you want it to be closed on top so that it doesn't develop a skin, but you don't want it to be airtight because there is going to be CO2 released from the starter. It's the the gases, right? If you think about a living thing, we take in our nutrients and then they're gonna have to escape somehow for sourdough and yeasts and just that kind of stuff in general. Usually it takes in the sugars and the flours and the proteins and all that good stuff. And then it has to release its waste, which are gases. So those cause air bubbles in your crumb, in your bread or in this case, it makes it appear bubbly. So in my jar, I now have my sourdough starter. When I store it, I'll just put the lid on. I won't buckle it. That way, if CO2 needs to escape, it can do so with ease, but it also will prevent it from getting a skin. I'm gonna take a rubber band. I'm going to mark where the line of my sourdough is right now so that in a few hours, when I see that my sourdough is going to be rising because of the bubbles i can see how far it's rising hey it is the next day and we are checking our sourdough starter okay so if you remember i labeled where it was yesterday and this is how much it rose so it's not that much right now but if you look closely you can see the bubbles along the sides Ta-da! It's very bubbly today. Okay, so to avoid extra footage that I don't really need to do, I'm going to pre-measure the water and flour and starter. And it's the same process again, 113 grams of each, mix it up and put it back in your container. But this time only let it set for 12 hours. Okay, so again, before I mix it all together, I'm gonna take a little sniff test. So it smells like, like bread. Do you know when you're, you're making bread and then it rises for a while, you know, after you let it rise and you have to punch it down, you smell it and it smells like, like bread. Not super yeasty. That's what it smells like. Hello. I don't even know what day it is. I think it's day five or something. Day six maybe. But it's a very exciting day because today is the day we get to start twice daily feedings. This is where she was yesterday and this is where she is today. It's literally doubled in volume. Here's what I'll tell you right now. If you're not seeing these signs, feed it 
once a day until you see these signs okay i would just like to point out i just came downstairs for a second in my house to get a snack and i just glanced at my sourdough starter it's about 11 30 right now and remember i fed this at nine this is where she was two and a half hours ago and here she is now okay it's about 2 30 and i just wanted to update you on what my sourdough is looking like right now so it's definitely doubled in size and there's bubbles everywhere along the sides there are some bubbles which is a great sign it's about 9 45 at night so it's a little later than usual but it's fine again it's not like super time sensitive as long as it's around 12 hours so if you're going to bed early one night and want to feed it at eight go for it i'm just going to feed this like normal 113 grams of everything all-purpose flour regular water and sourdough starter i left the starter out this morning and they're just my discards but they've like developed this film on top where it's like a skin and that's exactly what you don't want so yeah you definitely need some sort of loose fitting lid on top of your sourdough starter okay once your sourdough has consistently grown after you've fed it and you see this constant pattern and it just seems very consistent you it's ready to bake with and so i will be making sourdough in the near future which will be a different video but after you're done or you don't feel like feeding it every day don't just feed it when you feel like it because that'll cause it to spoil. Instead, I would recommend feeding it once and then putting it in the fridge and then letting it have about a week to grow and then get ready to be fed again or get hungry. And you'll feed it every week around the same time. So designate a day and you'll just feed it once a week when you're ready to bake with it again you'll take it out of the fridge maybe a day or two before you're supposed to and just feed it regularly twice a day once in the morning and once in the evening and it should be active and ready to go